Hello everyone, welcome back to X4 Foundations. Today we'll be talking about the basics of exploration, trading and mining. I also intended to approach the expensive subject of station building, but the end result was going to be a video longer than an hour, and most people get discouraged from clicking on that, especially on a channel that isn't that well known. Anyway, all I was going to say in that huge tutorial has been split into three separate videos. This one is about basic trade mechanics, the second approaches the basics of building, and the final one wraps things up by discussing station optimization and expanding your economic empire. I was planning to get these videos done a long time ago, but at the time I found the whole system confusing and the task ahead of me daunting. So I took a break and as soon as I've seen that a 2.0 patch went live, I decided to give the game another go on a new save on this start. Turns out starting fresh in the 2.0 patch was a good idea because on my old save game there was no conflict in the universe and as such, prices of goods would drop to rock bottom, meaning there was no incentive to trade or build stations. But that whole situation has been fixed and despite the few problems the game still has, now it's a good idea to approach all of these subjects. Most of you may not need these tutorials anymore, but perhaps you'll still find a few nuggets of information that you've overlooked. So without wasting any more time, let us begin. First of all, you're going to need to reach Reputation 10 with one faction and get about 2 million credits by either doing missions or piracy or crystal mining. Once you obtain the promotion and the money, I recommend you buy yourself a combat-capable ship so you can capture other ships or defend your property. You'll also need an exploration ship such as the Kestrel, Discoverer or Gilmo. Finally, in order to trade, you will need a hauler such as the Mercury or Vulture. Then, as you progress through building your wealth, you're going to need to expand your collection with mining vessels, haulers, freighters and eventually stations which you will place strategically to maximize your profits. The most important thing you need before you get started with trading is information. How can you trade goods from one station to another if you know nothing about either one? So, once you get yourself a discoverer, fit it with some travel engines and explore a little bit. You can either manually explore or appoint one of your pilots to take control of the scout ship himself and map out the universe remotely. For manual exploration you just have to activate the long range scanner and charge it up without overloading. This will send out a pulse that detects whatever floats around through space from asteroids to derelict ships to stations. If you do detect a station it will appear as a question mark icon on your map labeled unknown station. You can then fly there and see what kind of station it is. But if the question mark is labeled unknown object instead, there's a good chance it's a stargate or an accelerator which leads you to a new system. If you choose to remotely explore, you can order a scout's pilot to either zigzag throughout the sector by queuing multiple move to orders, or you can just right click on a sector map and choose explore. The second option however is very slow and should only be used to order a ship to see what's on the other side of a stargate or an accelerator. The next tip is simply common sense, but I feel the need to mention it anyway. You need to find the looping highway that connects the main sectors. Get on the highway and take a merry-go-round through all the passing systems. Then explore these sectors at your leisure, either manually or remotely. I personally mapped out most of the universe within two hours of starting my game, by just ordering two scout ships to explore everything. Exploration is extremely important and the first thing you should do, because at first, the economy is still in its infancy stage and many wharfs lack basic components to assemble ships you may want to buy. Therefore, exploration allows you to find stations which produce these crucial materials which you can buy and then supply the shipyards yourself. Allow me to elaborate by telling you about my first 4 hours. First I'll tell you what I've done and then I can guide you through what you can do if you've chosen a different path. Since I started as a Telari with a station, a vulture and a kestrel, I already had everything I needed to explore and supply materials for ship manufacture. So I employed a combination of manual and remote exploration with a Kestrel and when I earned enough money and reputation, I ordered myself an Eclipse Vanguard with basic tier 1 weaponry. I was too poor for Mark II weapons at the time. Because the wharf lacked hull and engine parts, I had to use the Kestrel to find stations manufacturing these and then I ordered my Vulture to buy some and sell them to the wharf building my combat ship. I queued about 12 different buy and sell orders and in the meantime I just continued exploring. Eventually the wharf had enough materials and my combat ship was ready, but the economy wasn't entirely revitalized. I needed more trade ships and I couldn't purchase any because, what do you know, the parts I supplied ran out. 
So I used my persuasion skills to convince other pilots to surrender their haulers to a good cause, and then I repaired them and ordered the newly appointed captains to supply that single wharf with all the materials it needed. Soon enough I could buy my own ships and I stopped relying on the generosity of others. But you might have chosen one of the other game starts and you won't have the same resources I had, and you will need to take a slightly different approach. The starter ship is a poor choice for capturing medium class haulers, and since you won't have any cargo ships, you might find it hard to revitalize the economy the same way I did. If you want to try, you can always attempt obtaining small class couriers, which are represented by this icon on the map. Or perhaps you feel daring and you think you can steal a bigger fighting ship? Theoretically, if you get behind one, you can plink it until the pilot gets bored enough to leave the ship behind, for you to claim, and then you can equip that one with more weapons and follow in my footsteps. Or you can just explore, mine crystals and do whatever while other pilots stabilize the economy themselves. It can take a while, but it can be a viable alternative as long as you don't mind sitting 10 hours in the useless starter ship. That was kind of a long rant, but many of you may run into this problem and could get discouraged. Once you've done your fair share of exploration and obtain a hauler, you can get started with trading. First thing you need to understand about trading is that it's all done from the map menu, starting with these trade filters which you can turn on and off, depending on the situation. Then you can type in the name of the where you'd like to trade, such as space fuel, and you'll see it highlighted in the filters. Alternatively, you can just click here and select the item from a list. You may also use this menu to filter the wares by volume, so you don't waste your time having a hauler do trading with 90% of its cargo space empty. And if you're inclined to do so, you can write station names in here, such as Hull Part Factory, and you'll only see those types of stations if you want to inspect one and see how it works. You then put your cursor over this ware and you'll see a little line guiding you towards the station that trades this item, and you can zoom in on the station to see it up close and set guidance to it if you want to trade manually. With a trade filter active, zooming out and looking at the entire universe map will show just one box with the highest bidder and the cheapest seller. All you need to do to make a profit is click on your hauler, right click on the cheap sell offer, fill your ship's cargo and then do the same for the buy offer and dump the cargo to the targeted station. This won't happen instantly as your ship will need to actually travel to the seller and then to the buyer but fortunately, unlike previous X games which worked on the basis first come first served, in this game you actually reserve the wares you buy, as well as those you sell. Once you've reserved the sale for a high price, that price won't decrease even if someone faster delivered the goods before you do. And that system works very well for auto traders. Now back to the filters. Zooming in on the map will show you the best buy and sell offers for each sector which actually has stations that trade your desired goods. Knowing this can be useful at times because, at least for me, the universe best buy offer for space fuel is 109 credits, but when I zoom in I notice that there's a station paying 132 credits, so I obviously want to sell to that one. I don't know if this is a bug or if it's something I'm overlooking, but I'm just saying. Get to know the optimal price for each of the goods you're peddling, and if something feels off, either update your trade offers, or zoom in and see if things add up. Knowing the best prices for the goods is especially important if you plan to set up stations to manufacture these products. Make a list or something. So, again, once you understand how trade filters work, you can order a trade ship to buy low and sell high, or you can do it yourself. Or, if your captains are really skilled, you can assign them to distribute certain wares or even perform auto trading, which is the way you should go to generate a steady profit. I personally have three auto traders who deal in normal goods such as engine parts, hull parts and even high-tech wares, and I also keep one hauler to occasionally purchase space fuel and sell it for half a million credits profit. Anyway, discovering stations and using the trade filters are just the first steps. As time passes, any trade offers of the stations you found will disappear and the prices of items will once again become a mystery. There's three ways of combating that and constantly be updated to the prices of stations. A temporary solution is ordering a scout to update trade offers in a certain sector. But this has to be done periodically for every sector. A more permanent yet even more time-consuming solution is to purchase a whole lot of satellites and deploy them close to stations. If you do this, place them strategically so they cover as many stations as possible. You can order a fast ship to buy a lot of satellites and remotely get the captain to deploy them by selecting the Deploy Civilian Satellite option. But because that takes such a long time, we will have to consider the third option. Making a one-time 
10 million investment into a trade offer subscription, which will constantly keep you updated to the prices on all stations owned by the faction you've invested in. Of course, nothing stops you from making this investment into all the factions, but if you practice what I call forceful asset acquisition and your relation with a faction drops, your big investment will be null and void. Should you betray us, you will immediately lose these benefits and shortly after, your life. It is wise to avoid piracy against factions you've invested in, that's all I'm saying. Better yet, if you do practice piracy, try to limit yourself to stealing because killing and destruction of property are fast ways to make enemies. And if any faction turns red, they will attack your traitors. You don't want that to happen, do you? No, of course not. That's why you will need friendly relations with all the factions. And you may think 10 million is quite a steep price, and I think so too, but if you play your cards right, you potentially stand to gain a lot more. But you don't need to do any of these things to trade. I personally purchased no trade subscription, and I've only placed the satellite network in a handful of sectors, and I'm still doing fine. Obtaining permanent trade info is something entirely optional. Earlier, I briefly taught you how to remotely deploy satellites and I want to continue by saying you can do the same with the resource probes if you wish to survey resource-rich areas before building a refinery or sending in your miners. I just told you that because trading isn't the only way to increase your income. You can also buy a mining ship or two, such as the Drill or Plutus, and give them a mining job from the information menu. If your pilots are mentally challenged, you'll have to either assign them to autonomously mine for one of your stations, or give them a sector auto-mine job, in a sector with asteroid fields and ice, ore, or silicon refineries. If a ship is assigned to auto-mine, it will automatically search for any resource you've selected, harvest it, and then sell it to the station that pays the most. For now, they're limited to the best offer in the current sector. Once these captains become actual well-adjusted human beings, you can give them the advanced auto-mine job, which allows them to travel through a few more systems in search of resources. And when their skill really increases, the expert auto-mine job becomes available, which enables them to be fully autonomous. If you select expert auto-mine, eliminate the basic minerals from their list of wares and have them mine Nividium. Once you do, your pilots will automatically scour the universe for Nividium asteroids, break them, scope them up and sell them to a trading station for a hefty profit. At least until the demand for Nividium dries up and prices hit rock bottom. Over time, this can earn you quite a lot of credits, but it won't last because Nividium is more of a luxury item with no real use on the market. For now at least. Who knows, perhaps new technology will be developed that cannot be manufactured without this rare mineral. As I've already said, if they're rookies, pilots can quickly develop their skills in certain areas of expertise if you assign them to mine or trade for one of your stations. Their piloting, morale and management skills will be the first to develop among others and you'll see how this comes into play in part 3 of this Trading Empire series. The last piece of information I can share about mining is this. If you feel like maximizing your profits from auto mining, invest in a capital ship such as the Magnetar. This ship made me quite a lot of money mining Nividium, but that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't replace the half-wit captain with one of my pilots from my drills, the ones which gained experience. But eventually the demand for Nividium disappeared and this ship is now left wandering the wilderness of space looking for minerals nobody wants. By the way, be careful when you purchase your first capital ship. Don't buy the Mark III thrusters because they cost way too much and do too little. Stick to Mark I's, they're good enough. Last but not least, you should consider an investment into one of the freighters. They're big, bulky and slow and it can take them 10 times longer to take the same trip as a hauler, but they carry a whole lot more. My personal favorite is the Argon in Carcaccia with its impressive 45,000 cubic meters cargo hold. If you buy one of these, ensure the captain is skilled enough so he can earn you money with auto trading. From my observations, I would say hull parts, engine parts and claytronics are the most profitable wares, but you should do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Just mind the trade routes and try to prevent your freighter from running into a Xenon K, or else you're just gonna lose your big investment. But you don't need to rely on auto trading with a freighter if your pilot isn't skilled, you can simply give them specific orders such as buy hull parts here for this price and then sell them to this wharf for this profit. Occasionally, you can even use the freighter to buy your own construction materials for when you build your own stations, if you have the patience. 
Alright, let's take a quick recap. We've talked about exploration, trading and mining. We still need to talk about station building, which can take a whole lot more time than we already spent here, which is why I left this subject for the next two videos. As I've said in the intro, I originally planned to make a single video, but ultimately I decided to split it into bite-sized chunks because it's easier to watch that way and it's better for my sanity. Anyway, we're done for now. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video. It's due to arrive very soon.